Hey, so we just got our first look at a potential Sora killer. And believe me, I am aware of the irony considering Sora hasn't even been released yet. But today I'm gonna to take a dive into this new model to see if it really is at the level of Sora quality or is it like Timu Sora? I've also uncovered some pretty interesting details and of course the question on everyone's mind, will we actually get to use this thing? And I genuinely do think so, probably before Sora because I do have a sign up link for you. Okay, let's dive in. So again, this is Vidu, maybe Vidu, I'm not sure. I'm gonna call it Vidu. Uh, it is a new AI video generator that can generate clips up to 16 seconds at 1080p. They released a sizzle reel for it. Let's take a look at that real quick. So this is obviously a Chinese model. It was developed by Xingsu Technology and Tsinghua University. Apologies for the likely butchering of the pronunciations there. Vidu clearly has Sora completely in his crosshairs as many of the clips from that sizzle reel were like direct references to that initial Sora video release. Now, obviously, as it is a sizzle reel, we did not see full 16 second clips there, but I do have a few examples of that longer runtime. We're also gonna take a look at that, but first I wanted to dive into like how this works. So Vidu's architecture is based off of UVIT or Universal Video Transformer, uh, which if I'm not mistaken, seems to be the culmination of two separate papers. The first is DPM Solver, which to my read helps diffusion models uh, sort of make better predictions about future generations. I do say to my understanding, because this is probably one of the most like math intensive papers that I have yet run across. I'm not even pretending to understand what half of this stuff is. The second paper is called All Are Worth Words, which actually sounds like the title of a Star Trek The Next Generation episode. While this paper is still very complex, it is at least a little less mathy, so I was able to wrap my head around some of it. Essentially what it boils down to is, the team managed to kind of combine vision transformers, which are very good at looking at images and figuring out, you know, what that image is and bashing that into a unit, which is an older type of model, but is very good at generating images. Smashing them together, they've created UVIT. And I guess what kind of makes this special is that UVIT treats everything, be it from time to, you know, specific conditions as tokens. It also utilizes long skip connections, meaning that it knows what the first frame of the video is and the last frame of the video. It can kind of chart a path between the two, unlike more traditional AI video generators, which, you know, that's why we get the hallucinating warpy stuff is that it often does not know where it's going. So this does end up differing from Sora, again, to my understanding in that Sora ends up creating sort of temporal spaces in which it creates its videos whereas UVIT kind of has an in and an out point. In terms of overall quality, I do think that Vidu looks really good. Is it like mind-blowingly Sora? No, not really, but we have to remember that those initial looks at Sora tended to be the exception rather than the rule. We'll talk more about that in just a minute, but first let's take a look at some of the longer Vidu outputs. So this is a full 16 second clip of a Vidu output. It's clearly referencing the TV screens in the initial Sora uh, hype reel. Yeah, this looks really good. I mean, the TVs are staying temporally coherent. Things aren't 
quite morphing all around. I will give you that the, you know, the visuals on the TV are not as detailed as the Sora outputs were, but each of them are staying within the screens. Like they aren't morphing out like that girl in the ring. The TVs themselves all kind of have like this mid journey V4 kind of look to me, which I actually really appreciate. I've been long on record in saying that V4 was one of my favorite models. It just kind of has like this weird, surreal kind of aesthetic to it that I actually really appreciate. Uh, another 16 second clip, this one clearly a panda bear playing guitar next to a lake. Uh, what's funny about this is that in my previous video on Firefly, there was also a bear playing guitar. So I, I don't know what's going on with AI researchers, but clearly they are all very honed in on bears playing guitars. So while I wouldn't necessarily call this the most like cinematically realistic output, I mean, it is a panda bear playing guitar. Uh, I am so really impressed. Namely, the background does seem to be very temporally coherent, even through that camera move. And the bear's shadow does seem relatively reactive to its motions. Lastly, after spending about 20 minutes really, really analyzing this video, I can tell you with 100% certainty, the panda is playing Freebird. Next is a 16 second sort of beach vacation villa sort of thing, um, definitely somewhere that I would like to visit. Uh, this showcases an interesting dissolve uh, between two shots, or three shots rather, um, and that is something that we have also seen in Sora. I do wonder if those dissolves were prompted given what we know about UVID at this point in that, you know, it has a beginning and an end and figures out the transitions between, or if this might've been something that was called out to be a drone shot and the model, you know, couldn't figure out how to do the drone shot. So it just put some dissolves in there instead. Although I will say, even though we're in essentially one location, it's three different shots within one location, uh, Vidu basically stays completely consistent throughout all three of those looks. Finally, rounding out with an example that's definitely more on the imaginative side, this one definitely calls back to the boat in the coffee cup uh, from the Sora example. This is a ship, you know, in rocky waters in a bedroom. The boat itself may look a little bit on the like 3D modely side, but it definitely is reacting correctly in terms of how it's being moved by the water. Uh, one interesting thing towards the bottom of the screen is seeing, I guess, I don't know, if, I don't know if that's the bed, but how that is actually like pushing towards camera as well as if it were sort of debris caught in the churn. Moving on to a quick one-to-one -one Sora shootout. Uh, I normally don't like to do these things because, you know, honestly, different models do different things. But, you know, regardless of whether this was tongue-in-cheek, which I actually do believe it was, I mean, Vimu clearly had its come-at-me-bro face on. Starting with the stack of TVs, the Sora example definitely has, you know, a lot more action happening on each of its screens, as well as that action being more clearly defined. The Vimu model does do a nice job with camera movement. Likewise, the TVs in the Sora version definitely do look more like their actual like vintage TVs. Uh, and the environment, uh, although I would say that that's kind of splitting hairs, but I do feel that aesthetically, at least the background environment in the Sora version just looks a little more appealing. Um, though, I, you know, I got to give credit to the Vimo version. It definitely does look like it's a real place. We only have a few seconds of the white truck driving through somewhere in Northern California, in my opinion. Um, but, you know, clearly in this case, you know, Sora definitely once again takes the lead in terms of environment realism. Um, I actually kind of do like the style of the Vimu truck though. But both are very good video generations and both feel like there is a weighty Jeep on, you know, a dirt road. Another shorter example coming out of Vidu, this is, you know, obviously the Tokyo walk sequence. It's always hard to tell given the shortness of the clip length, but I do feel that, you know, they are fairly comparable. Like the Vidu one has all of the inherent problems that the Sora model has in which it looks really good, but there is just something a little bit off about that gate. And when looking at these side by side comparisons, I do think it's important to kind of remind ourselves that, you know, these are both cherry picked examples. Sora still does produce videos that look like this. This one is still my favorite of all the Sora blooper videos. I mean, this thing, I could watch this thing for hours. In fact, recently there was some press from Shy Kids, the production company that utilized Sora to create the short film Airhead, where they discussed exactly how much legwork had to go into cleaning up that Sora footage in order to turn it into a final feature. What ultimately you end up seeing took work, time, and human hands to get it looking semi-consistent. Be that through the curation, the script writing, the editing, the voiceover, the music, sound design, color correction, all the typical post-production stuff. So yeah, he's 
basically more or less saying a full production process. And you know what, that's okay, because even where we currently stand, we can use this technology to create some pretty compelling imagery. Paul Trello just did a full VFX breakdown of how he utilized AI tools for his short film, Notes to My Future Self. Paul began his sequences by generating AI imagery and then comping his actors into those scenes. Uh, he then followed it along with a number of other techniques, expanding out the canvas using you know a variety of tools from Photoshop to Magnific, uh, and even Gen 2 to create some motion in those backgrounds. I'll have a link down below so that you can check out his VFX breakdown, as well as a link to Notes to My Future Self, which is definitely worth checking out. As for Vidu, there is a sign up link on their website, though as of this recording, the submit button appears to be broken. That might be because they are getting super slammed right now. So, you know, if you try it and it does not work, maybe give it a day or two and try again. And if you're interested in more Sora news, you might be interested in an exclusive interview that I did with Adobe that touches on Sora's integration into Premiere, as well as what their future plans for After Effects might be. Uh, that video is coming up next. I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.